Hello, welcome to Top Whistle, the Irish Whistle Review Show. I'm David Cartmel. On this episode, I'm reviewing another Gene Milligan whistle made by Gene Milligan of Denver, Colorado, USA. For those who did not see my previous episode, I reviewed the Cockabello Diamond Wood with the loud session mouthpiece. Whereas in this one, this is the aluminium body with the quiet session mouthpiece. For those who did not see my previous episode, Gene Milligan makes a variety of high-end whistles that are made from exotic woods to more conventional aluminium and plastic. This whistle will set you back 185 American dollars and if you wish to purchase this one for yourselves there is a link in the description box below. But for those who are wondering, well what's the difference between this one and the other one I previously reviewed? I'm about to show you. As you can see, the mouthpieces are different. The wooden one has the loud session mouthpiece. The aluminium one has the quiet one. They are differently shaped. As subtle as the difference is, on the right is the loud session mouthpiece. You can tell it is that one because the windway is the larger one out of the two whereas the one on the left is the quiet session mouthpiece which has the more narrow windway. The labium blades are shaped differently. One thing the whistles do have in common though is this beautiful Irish cross which is a trademark of Gene Milligan's whistles. As you can see he has also put his name, the place he's from, Denver, Colorado along with the issue number that is unique to each whistle. Another thing I do have to say I like about the G Milligan brand is how old-fashioned and classical they look in design. This whistle by comparison has the elements of that but it's more modern and sleek in design which is one thing I do have to say I really really love about this whistle and another great thing is if you're fussy about concert pitch this whistle is tunable as well because of the brass tuning slide but with these things I've mentioned does the quiet session mouthpiece with the aluminium body compete well against the Cockabello diamond wood with the loud session mouthpiece which I did in a previous video score a respectable 9.5 out of 10 we're about to find out After playing this whistle, I have to say I'm very impressed with the whistle's high quality sound. It's smooth, it's clear as a bell and very, very rich in tone. There were no screeches, shrills or any weird things that happened which is fantastic for a whistle of this calibre. It's highly responsive for quick melodies and changing between octaves. It's a very pick up and play whistle. There was no need to warm it up which really surprised me because of the whistle's thick cylindrical bore because normally they tend to need warming up before play so for me that was something that really impressed me now as well with the mouthpiece one of the great things about that was there was like the other one I reviewed by G Milligan there was no clogging at all so I could play for this non-stop no problem no need to 
clear it out of any debris or any saliva to continue play. The maintenance requirements is virtually low. I mean, you may have to put a brush in to clear up any saliva buildup, but the reality is this is a very maintenance-free whistle, which is one of the great things that go for this whistle. And with regards to the volume requirements, I was quite surprised by the fact that even though it's supposed to be the quieter mouthpiece out of the two, it's actually a fairly loud mouthpiece for something that's supposed to be considered quiet. So on a scale of 1 to 10, the loud session mouthpiece on the Cockabella Diamond Wood, I'd say is a 10 out of 10 for loudness, whereas on a scale of 1 to 10, this is about an 8 out of 10 for volume. So pretty much this too can be used in a loud environment to be played professionally by a professional player. And going further into the professional side of things, it was good in the outdoor tests. So I had no problems with wind resistance so easily. This could be used for a busking whistle and the air volume requirements was very average. You would not run out of breath playing this unlike the other G Milligan where you would easily run out of breath. So this is another thing that I've got to say goes quite well for this whistle and even what really surprised me was because of the ease of use playing this one I could even recommend this, believe it or not, to a novice player who even though yeah it's going to be expensive to buy they could easily grow into this whistle and play it professionally which is a good thing about this whistle as a long-term investment and if I can think of anything bad to say about the whistle, there's hardly anything actually I can say about it that's bad. I suppose if I was really that desperate I'd say it would be the brass bits on the whistle. Because of the brass material it's notorious for you know looking all tarnished after a short while of being interacted with by the player. So it tarnishes quite easily the brass bits so if you were to worry about aesthetics, that's the only thing that goes for this whistle, but in a nutshell, this is a great whistle, there's no problems, there's no weird anomalies, it plays like a dream. This is like, for me, the Lamborghini of Irish whistles. I would highly recommend it. After weighing the pros and cons of the whistle, I've decided to score this one my very first 10 out of 10 score. Without question, this is perhaps the best whistle I've ever played in my entire life. The quality of the whistle for its sound, along with the craftsmanship aesthetics to complement it, it's just out of this world. And I can definitely see this whistle being up there along the likes of a Ryden to the likes of Copeland, because they're highly sought after whistles and when the sad day where G no longer makes whistles, I can definitely see these whistles being highly sought after collector's items. It's universal for all players, whether you're an amateur to professional, and without doubt this whistle will be the best 185 you'll ever spend for an instrument. And I would also like to add that I would like to extend a special thanks to Gene Milligan himself for giving me this whistle, because he saw the previous video, he really liked it, and he gave me this one on the house. So. I would like to offer him a personal thanks for giving me this whistle and God bless you Gene. You've really made someone happy and I have to say you're the best. I really do think you are the best whistle maker around at the moment. And if you like this episode and you wish to see more shows like this, please do hit the subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Goodbye.